I had no illusions, none whatsoever, that he would be around for multiple books. Maybe, maybe one more book, maybe, but it, not even that. We didn't even know that would happen either. I didn't, I didn't go into that saying, well, I'm gonna write this book and I've got five already plotted out and made it. No, I wrote one. Uh, it, it did really well. It did really, really well. And, uh, and then, so we wrote the Alexandria Lane and the Venetian Betrayal and kept going. And now here we are 16 books later, the actual weaving of it together. Mixing information with action is the hardest thing the folks in my genre have to deal with. You can't have too much of either one or too little of either one. You've got to get this mix. And I'm not saying I'm great at mixing it, but I will say that I'm conscious of what I'm doing, mixing it. And I pay very close attention to the mixing. I just don't slop stuff down. You know, the notes that I have when I write a novel are about this tall, maybe 10, 10 inches or more. I'm only going to use 20% of those notes. 80% of those are not even going to make it into the book. And I have to make conscious decisions of what's going to come out of that big stack. Uh, and you don't want too much. You don't want too little. It's a, it's a, it's a delicate balancing act. You might say, well, how do you learn how to mix it? Practice. Just do it, keep doing it, see what works, see what doesn't, see what sounds good. The idea to put information into one of these things is that the reader reads down and they and they go keep reading, and they go, they go, oh, wait a minute. I just learned something a couple, I just learned something there. I, I didn't realize it till now, but man, I actually did. That's what you want. You want to, you don't want them to go, oh God, here it comes more stuff. Uh, you know, info dumps kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that I might be guilty of an info dump. I'm careful about it, though. I try as hard as I can not to. I've only done one book where the world was in jeopardy, and that was The Venetian Betrayal. I, I've done this on purpose. The, I, I, the, the so what in the novel is big to the characters of that novel and to the moment in time of those people, not to the whole world in general though it could have some ripple effect, but not. Now, the, the Venetian betrayal was a little more of a threat to the entire globe. Uh, so that was the only one I've ever done. So I'm very careful about that. I try to keep my so what's confined and tight. It also makes them more believable. It makes them more realistic. They're all special. Now, the great part is they're all different, but they're also the same. That's the trick about a series. You got to write every book the same, but different. That's the trick. Uh, and in my case, action, history, secrets, conspiracy is the same. Cotton Malone's the same. The secondary characters the same. But the, but the antagonist is always different. The motivations are always different. The history period is always different. The thing from the past is different. The so what is different. So you have the same but different. That's the trick to writing a series. I always chuckle when I read thrillers that someone wants to take over the world and conquer it and do this. Well, what are you going to do with it when you get it? And second off, when you destroy the world, Who's going to rebuild it? I mean, okay, you got it. It's destroyed. What do you do with it now? Makes no sense. It never made any sense to me. So I keep my so what's realistic and smaller. And that's where like the Knights of the Golden Circle, the Knights of Malta, these folks work very well. It works perfect for that because you can confine the intrigue within their veil of secrecy, which thriller readers love but you also can have a threat that could seep out beyond that. And that's how, I, that's how I do it. The bad guy has to have some good qualities and your good guy has to have some bad qualities. So you have to, you have to put that in there. So I, there's always an element of, of something of, of a contradiction in the bad guy. I, I make sure of that, that his motivations have a little bit of something where you can go, well, you know, I kind of see what he, I see what he's saying there. I don't agree with it and I wouldn't do that, but I understand why he feels that way. You want that in there. to so give him dimension. It really irritates me when I read reviewers it reviews that, you know, characters are, are, are two dimensional characters are stiff. I mean, I, I, characterization is hard for me. I spent a lot of time on it and I try as hard as I can not to make them two dimensional or stiff. I do everything I can. And it, it's a little frustrating sometimes when you, when you, when you go out of your way and work really hard to give this guy or, or, per, or you know, a guy or a woman per, this personality. I've only actually had, one female antagonist. I've had that. So I, I get, you know, I have, um, 
I try to give them all these qualities to make them three dimensional and people don't seem to see it. I, I, you want to write back to them and say, well, what would you do different? 